Thank you for the We can do some things that you can read, but you come for it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
And so what I'm doing is what I'm to be his children, his workmanship. Some history books tell us that it was the African that he started with humanity. When he decided to blow his breath of life, he chose a brown face. He chose the look of soil to begin humanity. Yeah. Hallelujah. And so we celebrate not only the process of being in America, but before the yesteryear, the time before that, that there was the beginning. And we were not the ones who started it, but it was the Lord, the author, the original author, but not just the author. When I think about the word author, not only do I think about writer, but I think of the word authority. And he began with us, brown people. He decided to start humanity with a brown face. And he doesn't make an accident. He doesn't do it by accident. He doesn't do anything by mistake. And we know that there was an enemy who was so in all this glory that he wanted a piece of it. God too created him and made him an instrument that would use his body to work. And it was so to this angel that he said, I want to be this for myself. <laughs> and I want to be like that. I want to actually experience it myself. And the Lord, who is all powerful, and the author and the finisher said, But this is not for you to have. It's only for me. I'm the author. You can have you got to go. And so, in the beginning, he decided the word, the Lord used his word and decided that man would be made in his likeness. Hallelujah. But he didn't just stop with the man, he decided that there was going to be a wolf man that was going to be about producing animals. And so the garden is as a husband that he was going to provide and also again. But there was that this great author had so much power and he knew that he had already messed up and lost his opportunity to really truly share that. So he decided he wanted to whisper in the air of the creation and to cause there to be a separation between the author and his children, his image. And so he whispered in the air. He whispered in the air. And still to this day, y'all, he whispers. And at that moment in the garden where the first man and the first woman had complete access to the author, had all of the garden that they could explore. Just, yeah. Don't touch the cookie. Don't touch the cookie. Just one, just one animal. You can have all of this. And so often, even us today, still, we have all of this one in our gifts. And so from the beginning, the Lord set it up. And he said, listen, I got you. I'm the author. And we listened at one point to just the author, to the father. But then we, too, started to look at the beauty of what God had created and decided that, wait a minute. I know all of this here, but ooh, this here, trace, this here. This here, right here, I want this, although I was told I couldn't have it. And so we are still to this day wrestling and learning how to listen to the author, who is also the finisher, 
while there's this voice whispering and telling us that we're less than, we're less than, we need to go after something that God has told us we don't even need. Okay. And I'm so grateful that the author decided to provide not just, as we say, Adam, but he decided that there would be a new Adam. That we wouldn't just stop there, but that there would be a new Adam. And we're so grateful for Jesus, the new Adam, who decided that he would share again the glory that we mistook for a moment for a little and decided that he would actually wrap himself in himself, in humanity, would place himself, would oppress himself, and wrap himself in an embryo. You want to talk about oppression, black people? Jesus was the ultimate one who oppressed himself. He started in glory. In the beginning, was a part of a heavenly, a paradise, but decided I've got to connect with our image bearers. And so I've got to put on their skin that was actually made to praise me, but I've got to put it on so that they can recognize me. I bought, I bought. And so he decided, well, we experienced oppression, Black people, in our decision to choose the sinful direction of disobeying our Father. The Lord understood it still and chose to bring his son, chose to send his son, and Jesus chose to write himself in oppression, relating to our oppression of a sinful nature and decided that he would walk on earth and allow himself to learn our language just as we did experience a moment of enslavement where we were violently stripped away from our home place. And again, most of us refer to that home place of Africa. And we experienced enslavement, but again, Jesus in understanding all of humanity also decided to enslave himself, wrapping himself in humanity's skin. Self inside of a womb, the very womb that he was a part of bringing to life. And then he allowed himself to become a baby in the arms of the very one that he created. Talk about oppression. Talk about sacrificing for each glory to be among the very ones that you created. He also allowed himself to learn how to walk and talk our language. We too in this land have had to learn to learn language and understand the new world that we were a part of. And to expedite this, because I'm still working on this piece, Jesus lived through rejection, but born to technically a girl and single. They weren't married yet. We in our community have also experienced teen pregnancy. We've experienced, right, coming from the hood. Folks was questioning. Right? Did anything good come from the and Can any good come from North Philly? Can any good come from Philly? Any part you can name. The shame. The shame that our people have faced. Jesus decided to join in. He wasn't born in a hospital, 
right? But imagine where animals eat. Anybody homeless? Anybody can't find a space, a place to live? Black folks, have you ever experienced that? Jesus identifies, has lived a life of glorious and also submitted and oppressed like never before. Then it ain't even over. Had the audacity to also be obedient to his parents, tuned into his father's business. They was heading off, and he remained talking to folks. Jesus, all powerful, all knowing, the author and the finisher. The parents came to that said, Boy, he said, Business. He could have told them all the children. He had all this. He had to wait. He had to wait. So he humbled himself. He was asked to be obedient to the world. That was supposed to be honoring and glorifying him. And the mother was saying, Son, you follow my lead. The authority on this side of glory. Jesus was oppressed to the ultimate black people. So as we celebrate this mom, may we identify and understand that he went through children, what it means. To put down, to lay down, and to say, oh, okay, I'll get to that at some other point. I'll learn to be among the ministers and the priests and learn how to preach a word and to share a word. My time will come, but right now, I'm going to go with my mother and my father. Then he went on, he experienced friendship and choosing people to be by his side that didn't always understand him. Have you ever experienced rejection? Have you ever experienced backbiting or betrayal? He called on some folks to be by his side. And they weren't just any old folks. They were the very ones that were his image bearers. So it hurt much more than you imagine. Because you are the very one that I created to love and to honor me a certain way. But yet, he stopped. He didn't allow that to distract him or to disturb his mission. He allowed himself to experience oppression and rejection. So that we too could see that and how to handle that in our own lives. And I said I was going to hasten, so let me get there. In the end... He allowed himself to be beaten, spit at, body ripped. Black people in our history, have we ever heard of our ancestors being whipped, being mistreated in enslavement? During this pandemic, the Lord has just really helped to lift this up for me and to help me to see that his blood is like a red carpet that he is rolled out for all humanity. And even connecting to the black people and to our history, but it's all humanity, it's not just us. And so in the end, Jesus was lynched. Black people in our history, we had a history where folks have been lynched. He was lynched. But he's the author and the finisher. So it didn't stop there. So even though he experienced it, he allowed himself to go through that. We, beautiful people, beautiful black and brown faces, as well as all the world. He has modeled for us how to rise up and to live again. And we in our history 
have done that through our music, through our singing, through our dancing, through our education, through our learning, and there's more to come. May we also, like Jesus, accept the royal carpet that he and his blood, all the blood, just sign my name. May we resurrect and also help to lead people back to the love of the Lord as we ourselves embrace the call to be a part of the start, the origin, we went through the oppression, and now overcomers. May we rise in Jesus Christ. Happy Black History Month, Black people, as well as all humanity. Let us, let us shine in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. I don't know what to say, but Philippians 2.13, I just looked it up. It says, God is at work both to will and do his good pleasure. And I say here at High Street today, February the 19th, 2023, God is in the building. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 And you're going to get your big voice because you're going to pray over the offering this morning. I just feel like you want to pray. Amen. I didn't say Holy Ghost said it, so if you don't want to do it, you know. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is Pastor's birthday, and we're going to have a celebration. So if you have cards and stuff for Pastor, you can save them until later. And put them in the basket downstairs. Sister Dorothy will have it. Okay, it's time for offering. Clap your hands again. Stand up. Okay, you can turn around and face them and do the prayer as loud as you can. You're not going to have wait till everybody that can stand up, stand up. This is still part of praise and worship. Amen. 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 Okay, here are my sister Cynthia. Thank you. Thank you so much. Everybody that can stand up can stand up. If you can't stand up, stand up in your heart. Appreciate it. God sees it. Heavenly Father, we give you praise and glory and honor. We worship you, God of all creation. We worship you, God of all creation. That we do the work of the ministry every way and all that you say and do. We pray for you to praise Jesus. In Jesus' name, we all say amen. This is Music Sunday. That's our offering this morning. Tithes and offering. Let us come from the rear on the outer side, give you money, and you can go down the middle. Amen. <laughs> Oh. 
Calling things for 18 Romans, calling things that are not where they were. So there you go, girl. Amen. That is so good. Now we need to push stuff. Yeah, I don't know. It's me. I go home and eat my mom's jacket. This ain't that true. Thank you. 
We thank you, the Lord. Don't stop praising this because I got it. Thank you, praise. 
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. When I take this girl on the road, I'll be taking my dear brother the end over me. And he will help us to get in the right place at the right time. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. All right, one technology fails, so I'm now using my other technology. And uh, that's okay, God is good. If you look at the book of Acts, you don't have to turn. I'm going to be in a few verses and 28 most of the time. Uh, we just finished the book of Acts. An awesome experience in, in studying about how to put yourself in the place to be used by the Holy Spirit. And to under, not to understand the Holy Spirit, just remember that you can't understand it. He is way beyond our thinking. So if you think you've got the Holy Spirit covered, then you need to go back again. You can't understand the Holy Spirit, but you can understand the place that he has for you in developing you into being the person that God has called you to be. And not just to sit down and say, okay, now I know what God has called me to be, but to get up and start moving. Amen. So, I don't know why you guys are still sitting. Amen. <laughs> All 28 chapters of Acts we covered, and you're still sitting. <laughs> Lord, help us. <laughs> The ending of verse 28 says, and so we came to Rome. I want to talk a little bit about the destination, but I want to talk a lot more about the journey. When I left home this morning, I had one final destination in mind for this period of time, and that is to arrive at 222 East High Street. Now, I had a destination beyond that, but we're talking about just a physical destination. My destination is to be here. I wanted to be here today. When I left home, my intent was to be here. That's my destination. Yeah. yeah. But Sister G can tell you that my journey was not a direct flight from 1114 Greenwood Avenue to 222 East High Street. I had to get behind some people who didn't want to drive. You see, the Lord, it, when you have a destination, the enemy will always try to put things in the way of how you would get to your destination. But the Lord has promised he will be with you all the way. Yes. It, he didn't promise that you would not go through waters. He did not promise you wouldn't go through rivers. He didn't promise that you wouldn't go through fire. He told you when you pass through the waters. When you pass through the rivers. When the word when is a very interesting word, is a predictive word, because you know what's coming after and it's what's intended to happen. So God is not trying to tell you you get saved and you just your destination is heaven. I'm heaven bound. Yes, you might be heaven bound, but your first journey. And God has promised to be with you through your journey. The waters, the waters will not overflow you. The rivers will not throw you over. The fire will not burn you. 
The journey is important, and Lord focuses on the journey. So way back in Acts chapter 23, and I believe that's the earliest time it was mentioned, verse 11 says, the following night the Lord stood near Paul and said, take courage. As you have testified about me in Jerusalem, so your destiny is wrong. Now that's just me adding my phrase. So you must also testify in Rome. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, O oh Lord, for your Holy Spirit who is here. We thank you for his presence and we pray right now for his preeminence. That he will have his mighty way in, in using the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. May it be acceptable to him. May our ears be ready to hear and may our feet be ready to move. Bless us, encourage us, challenge us, we pray. Amen. Amen. This is chapter 23. Take courage, Brother Paul, because just as you are standing here before the Sanhedrin, before all of the religious bigots, before all the people that are challenging you about your rightful interpretation and understanding of who God is, of who Jesus that walked among these people and lived for them and died for them and rose for them and is still in heaven interceded for them, as much as you are able to stand and give before these religious authorities, so too you will be able to stand and testify of me in Rome. So Paul knew that he had a destination called Rome. But he didn't know how he was going to get there. Saints, when God calls you to a ministry service and he makes it clear to you, don't worry, anybody who's not sure what your ministry service is, I can tell you why you're not sure. Simply because you don't want to know. You would rather be in the, in the murky waters of not understanding what God is calling you to do so that you can say it. Well, I'm still waiting for the Holy Spirit to tell me where I'm supposed to be. That's your cop out. Church people, you're smart. You are willing to stand before the Holy Spirit and challenge him that he has not made it clear to you where you should be and what you should be doing. And so, let me tell you that that trick has been exploded in front of me. Because the Holy Spirit has shown me that you just don't want to know. So if your toes are being crunched because of my foot stepping, I say move. <laughs> Simply move. The journey will be challenging. The journey will not be smooth. I, I want you to know right off the bat, all of you, who, who wants to be the next pastor of High Street? Raise your hand. Put it up. I see two hands right up. Praise the Lord. The journey will not be smooth. That's all I got to say to you. One thing smooth. I'm glad you're called. But you got to keep going. You got to keep walking. You got to keep listening to what the Holy Spirit is saying. You got to stay obedient and stand before the Lord. And that's not just for pastors. Who wants to be the next doorkeeper of High Street? Somebody wants to be the pastor and the doorkeeper. Woo! <laughs> if you want to be the doorkeeper of High Street, you still got to stand before the presence of the Lord. It's not just for those who are standing behind the pulpit. It's for everybody. We're challenged. Paul has to journey through feelings, through festus, 
all the way to the king of Britain. And when Paul and started to talk to king of Britain, see, Paul is just so excited about what God did for him. Anybody in the church excited about what God did for you? What God did for you? Don't ask for me, but you can ask for me. It doesn't matter. It's not me that wants to know this. It's you that needs to know that you haven't been sharing your story as much as you ought to. Paul got talking about this Jesus who he met when he was authorized by these same rascals who are now trying to try him. He was given permission that he could go anywhere and arrest one that he found who was believing and proclaiming that Jesus was the Christ, that Jesus was the Messiah, that Jesus was God. And he, with his authorization, was on the Damascus road because he had a good intel system that told him where the believers were. And he was about to make his largest arrest of these people that they call by the way, eventually the Christians. And he spoke about the fact that while he was on this Damascus road, he saw a light from heaven in the known day. Now, let me tell you, that's impossible. There's no light brighter than the noon day sun. I don't care where you are, if you are outdoors and you're in the midst of a noon day sun, there's no light that could possibly shine brighter except for God Himself. He saw the light. And he said, Everybody with me saw this light, but only I heard the voice. And that voice came from heaven. That voice was God. That voice was Jesus. The same Jesus. That I know there are so many people for believing in Jesus. And Jesus told me, Why are you messing with my people? Why persecutest thou me, Saul, as his name was then? And he said, And after that, I was blinded. But the Lord told me, that I would become an apostle to the Gentiles. Another destination. But what a journey that he would have to go through. And now I am here, O King of Britain, assuring you that this Jesus, this Jesus that walked this way, he is the Son of God. He is God himself. He died, and because of his death, the blood of his atonement for our sins has made us now free that we can believe and become children, sons and daughters of God himself. And while, when he was wrapping up, the king says, Paul, man, you almost persuade me to become a believer. You're persuading me. But I can't give it. Paul did not stop telling his story. So we're progressing now all the way to chapter 28. But I want you to understand that Matthew 5 says, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely. You church people who want to deny stuff that is true, that's not who God is talking about. God is talking about those who falsely spread rumors against you. Then you are blessed. Or was standing before these people being falsely accused. I mean, they were lying. 
they were, they were so crazy that they couldn't explain themselves because remember, when you lie, you don't really have a whole lot of backup. And they had nothing to back up their lies. They put people, they, they plotted and put people to come and bear false witness, and then they all were found out to be lying. They didn't know what they were saying. Paul was able, able to confuse them by saying, this Jesus was resurrected from the dead. Do you believe in the resurrection? And that divided the crowd because, you know, some of them were Sadducees who did not believe in the resurrection, but had the nerve to ask Jesus a resurrection question. Can you imagine that? My belief is there's no thing called resurrection. But Jesus, got a crazy question for you. This woman, was married, had no children. Her husband died as a young widow. So you know the custom. She married his brother. And he died. So she married the next brother. And he died. So she married all seven of these brothers. And all of them died. Thank you for seeing Jesus. <laughs> All seven of these husbands died. But Jesus, who knows if she's going to be in the resurrection? Imagine that. They don't believe in the resurrection, but they ask in Jesus this ridiculous story of this woman who went through seven husbands, all died. Whose husband will she be in the resurrection? You can't trick Jesus. Jesus is like, okay, well, let me tell you. Um, in heaven, as far as I know, there's no marriage or given in marriage. I mean, nobody is married. Sorry, Sister Reed, but Brother Reed is gone. He's only your husband for the 70 some years that the Lord blessed you on earth. But when the Lord transported him to heaven, I'm sorry. You only got the memory of 70 some years, right? Because a whole lot of memories, they shall last you till you go to heaven. But when you get there and you find Bill, he will not be your husband. Sorry, man. George will not be your husband. Amen. And when the time comes, sorry, G will not be my wife. <laughs> there's no marriage, no given in marriage, so there's no, but you know, this question is ridiculous, but I don't even have to worry about it. Paul said, This is the Jesus that these people killed. And now they want to kill me for believing in this Jesus. And so, they arrived in Rome. The reason I'm focusing on that is because, as I said, this chapter 28, chapter 23, the Lord says you're going to be testified me in Rome. The journey to Rome, I don't have time to tell you about the whole journey, but it went through a few stops. All appealed to Caesar, and therefore he was heading to Rome. But he was put on a ship that he told them not to sail. Because the Lord warned him that this should not be, you shouldn't take this journey right now. But they said to Paul, who are you? We are experienced sailors. We're leaving. We got the right wind, the right conditions. We're leaving. And so they left. I want to read something from you in chapter 27, verse 23. Acts chapter 27, verse 23 reads, Last night an angel of the Lord, to whom I belong, and whom I serve, stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar. That's the destination. And God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men, 
For I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. The destination is wrong, but the journey involves a shipwreck. How many of your lives have gone through a shipwreck? How many of your marriages have gone through a shipwreck? How many of your families have gone through a shipwreck? It says that this ship was torn in pieces. And also said they had over 230 or 60 men on board the ship. This ship was as big as this building. Maybe even with decks. It was torn into pieces. It was so shattered that when the prisoners were jumping off of the ship, when they could see land, they wanted to kill them because you know we can't let prisoners escape. So the Lord provided pieces of the ship to help those who couldn't swim to hold on and get to shore. But how many of your lives are now in a shipwreck? I want to give you an encouragement that God has said to you that there's a brighter day ahead. And God has said to you there's Rome coming. God has said to you there's victory for you. God has said to you he can pick up the broken pieces. God has said to you that though your life may be in shambles, though your circumstance may be in shambles, though your job may be in shambles, whatever it is that you are in a shipwreck moment, your life will be spared and I will be with you all the way. I will see to it that you are triumphant. You're going through waters or you're going through rivers or you're going through the fire. But I'm with you. He says, keep on pressing on. You will have trials then. I hate to be the one to be the bearer of that news. But life ain't always going to be rosy. But Jesus will never fail you. There is a friend in Jesus. When your spouse forsakes you, whether it's a he or a she, when your spouse leaves you, Jesus will be there. When your job says you're, you you this position that you hold is now redundant, a very nice word, means it ain't existing no more, which means you ain't got no more job, which means you're fired, which means there ain't no more money coming to you. However nicely they put it, God says, I'm your child. I am your provider. I will either get you another job, another position. As a matter of fact, I'll get you a better job. I'll get you a better paying job. The journey may be difficult, but I will see you through. I'm here to encourage you, saints. High Street, I know you look around, we can talk all about High Street, but High Street is a beautiful place. What do you think I got up this morning when I came here? Because I couldn't see myself being anywhere else. It's a beautiful place, saints. We got some loving people right here, High Street. We got challenges. But God is there for us. We've got testimonies of God healing people from cancer who are still in this congregation today, cancer free. And it's not one year or two years, but it is 10, 15, and 20 years cancer free. We've got people that were not supposed to be alive today that are going to be in their 90s. To tell you that they gave up on them. I can tell you, I, I think I almost forget the, the, the year, but it was nifty 50 years. So anybody who's with ISTE could do that year, but I think it's 2006 or something like that. I was in Anderson attending Institute, uh, ISTE in Service Training Institute. And I got a call 
in the midst of what was going on and, and, and it was a beautiful service. I got a call and somebody says, take this call. And the call says, Mother Washington is in the hospital and the doctors have said she is not going to make it. Man. So get all the family together and that's it. I mean, we can't do anything for her. We can't give her any medicine. We can't put her on any machines. There's nothing we can do. It's over. I say it's just an interesting story about Mother Washington because I got people here who know Mother Washington, who are related to Mother Washington, who were on the line when I talked to them about Mother Washington, and they could back up my story that God was already amazingly working on Mother Washington's behalf, whose food was burnt to a crisp in a party. She did not have any inhalation of smoke. She, she passed out already, so there was nothing else that their parents could do to her. But the Holy Spirit was moving in that place, and the Holy Spirit said to me, this is not due to death. The Holy Spirit says to me, she is going to survive this, and I hate telling people stuff like that. The Holy Spirit knows what I hate to do. Uh, you know, there's a few things in pastoring that I hate to do. When you call me and somebody is dying, I'm like, let them die. I would rather that than to tell you that they're going to live and then they die. But I mean, I can't tell you let them die because I won't be pastor no more than they'll be a board meeting the next day. Then I call the pastor. He says, okay, let the dead bury the dead and let them go on. And, you know, so I know I would have been pastor for long, but you got to listen to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit said, she is going to survive this. This is not unto death. And I related this to the family. And I want you to know, I don't remember the number of years, but Mother Washington not only came out of that hospital, she came back and sat in that pew, her favorite pew, for many years. And she lived at least 15 more years, I believe. At least. Because God is in control. Because the Holy Spirit is the, the person that numbers our day. And sometimes when it's not. I mean, the Holy Spirit says, Doctor, thank you. All you can say is thank you to the doctor. He, the doctor, the poor doctor, assuming it's a he, but you know, it could be a she, you know. Forgive me, ladies, when I say he, you know. We're, we're in this woke moment and I might get in trouble. But the doctor did what he or she could do. They could do no more. Thank God for the honesty of that doctor to say, hey, it's over. At least you didn't fire that doctor. And I have said, There's nothing like it. Your sister came back in this church, prayed and testified. And, and I mean, she was still a deacon and, and calling people. I mean, what, what, has, what, what does the Lord have to do to impress you that I speak is a place to be? The one that I've chosen to tell you, but there are many. If I kept going on of the stories of High Street, we'd be here all day, and you, I won't get to eat any of the stuff they have down there for me. So they got to hear it on. But we have to know about, I want to talk about at least four things quickly the power of the Holy Spirit to protect. The power of the Holy Spirit to protect. I want to read chapter 28, starting at verse 3. Paul gathered a pile of brushwood, and as he put it on the fire, a viper, a venomous snake, driven out by the heat, fastened itself on his hand. When the islanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, they said to each other, This man must be wicked, because even the governor's justice did not let him live. After everybody survived, a shipwreck. So the people expected him to swell up and 
suddenly fall dead. But as the wind along and see nothing so happen to him, they changed their minds and said, Oh, he must be a God. Because they knew that snake was poisonous. But God, the Holy Spirit, is a God that can protect you, that says you will handle wild things, you will handle venomous things. I'm not telling you to go out there and say, God, God is my God, so bring me the snake. No, I'm saying when God gives you a destiny, the journey will not stop you from getting there. When God told the disciples, I will see you on the other side, the raging winds did not stop them from getting there. The story was about the journey, and the journey was for Peter to be able to tell his life story that he walked on water just like God walked on water. The, 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 when God says, I will see you on the other side, that is a commitment to getting you to the other side. When God gives you a destination, it is God's commitment to get you to that destination. Man. I know I was supposed to bring a word today. I wasn't worried about the people who weren't driving properly. I know I was going to get here today. I had no, there was no doubt, never a doubt in my mind. Why? Because God says you got to deliver this word today. Now, I might die tonight, but for sure, I'm going to deliver this word today. Amen. There was another time when the, the, the young men, disciples, were in a boat, and another raging wind happened, and the destination was the same thing. God says we're going to go to this new place. And the journey was for them to be, be revealed that he is in charge of the water. He was asleep. And they're waking up and said, do you not care that we are perishing? And Jesus probably rubbed one eye. And he said, hey. <laughs> That's all. Because you folk, folk like, like to do grandeur things, you know. This one preacher likes to blow in the mic, you fall off. Okay, that's his style. I like Jesus' style. Please. Jesus. Calm down, water. Just be quiet. I'm here. Lord. The journey was to teach the disciples yeah. whose they were and who he was. Yeah. That even the wind and the waves obeyed his word. Could you imagine being with a man who can smell the water? Calm down. Jesus didn't keep a lot of noise. Jesus didn't get him talking about, I command you this and I command you that. Peace. Be still. Come, boy, down. Calm down. I also want to talk to you about the power of the Holy Spirit, which is for divine providence. Because God knows what's happening already before it happens. So I don't want you to think that God is making up rules as he goes along. God is already in charge. Later in the same chapter, when this had happened, same thing, the rest of the sick on the island came and were cured. This is the same man who the vipers bit his hand and they expect him to die. Now the Lord is bringing people to him and they are cured. It says they honored us in many ways and when we were ready to sail, they furnished us with the supplies we needed. See, God is there in everything. God will bless. The Holy Spirit also has power to encourage Verse 14 says, there we found some brothers and sisters who invited us to spend a week with them. And so we came to Rome. 
Imagine that sense. You're shipwrecked. You end up on some island that nobody knows. I reminded you on Wednesday night. Even the great prophet Elijah lost it. Because he only knew God in the fire. He only knew God when he was on top. When things were going the right way. I mean, not to put it down, saints, he didn't have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit like we do. So don't, don't look down on the great prophet Elijah. Let me tell you, he was great. He was so great that he didn't see death. He went right up. So I'm not putting down Elijah, but he's a man and he got it wrong because some crazy woman named Jezebel said that she was going to kill him by the next day, noon. And this man goes hiding right in the fire to, to a drenched altar that had water all over the wood and had ditches filled with water. The people worshippers all day. And he was so powerful, Elijah. He said, Maybe he's asleep. Shout a little louder. These people lost their voices, lost every hope. And then when it was his turn, he just says, Fire. Fire came down. And they destroyed a whole lot of the Baal worshippers. Now this crazy woman Jezebel says she's going to kill him and he goes hiding. And then he's looking for God in the fire again. You know, there's an earthquake come, there's no God. There's a fire come, there's no God. Because some of us only see God when there's a whole lot of shouting going on. When, when the church is, like today when the church is on, you say, oh, the church is on fire. Oh, yeah. People are on fire. I mean, people are shouting and they're singing and they're doing all this. Money. But yeah, it's on fire. He is. I'm not putting that down. But it must be reminded sometimes God comes in the peace be still voice. I told you, he doesn't always shout. Yeah. Just says peace. Be still. The sound, the, the verse in Kings, first king says, he came in the whisper. But then Elijah heard the Holy Spirit, and Elijah started to confess again, like a man, like we do. Oh, I'm the only one here, God. They all left me. I'm the only one left who is certain. Oh, I gave my whole life to you, God. Uh, just help me, because they all deserve me. Sister Fool, I showed up late. <laughs> he ain't coming. You know? Then you heard it before. Yeah. But what happened is the Lord said, Wait a minute, Elijah, who took me? Come on. I mean, this person by our standards. When God says he's got 7,000, that is not 6,999 plus one. That means you can't number them because it's a perfect number multiplied by mortal factor. Ain't no 7,000. I have no idea what the true number is, but it is nowhere near 7,000. God had millions of people that did not go to the worship him. Friends who put them up. Listen, saints. I mean, Paul is just the Holy Spirit is just wonderful. <laughs> let, let me show you the last thing how the Holy Spirit blessed Paul. The ending of, of, of this chapter, verse 30 says, For two whole years, Paul stayed there in Rome in his own rented house. Not a partner. His own rented house. And Paul did not pay for the rent. It was just a rented house that was given to him. 
and welcome all who came to him. He proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without any hindrance. This is coming a time. High Street is coming a time. Yeah. I hope you can feel the Holy Spirit moving because it's coming a time when I see we're going to walk out here and people are going to come and say, I'm sick, pray for me. We're going to pray for them and they're going to be healed. Then others are going to come and say, I need financial help. We're going to bless them with financial help. People are going to say, I come, that need delivered. We're going to lay hands on them. They're going to be delivered. And we are going to keep the gospel of Christ with our interference. I'm doing Don't sit down and say, well, I, the Lord showed me what to do. Uh, I'll tell you that. No. Get up and start doing There's a destination that God has for High Street and for the people of High Street. Amen. Claim that destination. Yes. Walk that. in the knowledge of that destination. I can't put you on in the role, but I introduced that young man over there as Dr. Dr. Milano Shane. That was my prediction of the destination. But I have not a clue what he went through. Become Dr. Shane. <laughs> Sharice, if you want to know when you went through, talk to Sharice. Because she was there. If you want to know some of what you went through, talk to the kids. They don't really understand it, but they were there. And if you really want to know, she was praying. And of course, you can go to the source and just talk to Dr. Shane. <laughs> I know what he went through, but let me tell you, he didn't wake up one day and was Dr. Shane. He went through a journey. Yeah, yeah. He went through some sleepless nights. He went through some giving up, crashing down moments. He went through times when he was ready to throw up his hands and say, this doctor thing? I don't know what kind of thing he was talking about because I don't think it's going to happen. But the Holy Spirit was there. Yeah. And when you get to your throwing up hands time, the Holy Spirit holds up the hand when you throw it up. You don't let it fall back down. He holds it up, let you know, hey, I got the hand. I don't know what you think you're going through. You're going through many things, but God has got your hand. And he's got you so that you can make it to the other side. Our God is awesome. Yeah. Our God is wonderful. And I'm happy to be a servant of the Most High God. And you too should be happy to be servant and servants of the Most High God. And my street is happy that the Most High God is right here in our midst. Yeah. He, he came down and he's brother in us. Look at how the Lord can take. Someone who's gifted with words and let them tell the story of black history wow. through the life of Jesus. Wow. I thought he was good, but he was good. He was great. All right? It's just not something you read. So when this gets published, I put that we were not a high school. So they that all the shit. After that book, but only he that God in our hearts to do things that only He then can make happen. We got some young ladies over here, and a couple of young ladies over here, a couple of young men back there. I can't wait. I'm gonna be old. I'd be wearing glasses by then for sure. But I can't wait to see what God is going to do for these young people. I'm excited about these young people. I, just let me finish with this because I really feel motivated to talk. So I got to shut up. I had a wonderful conversation 
with the, I, I, just like the A girls. <laughs> I know them very well, so there's a Bible. But the A girls was here. <laughs> These young ladies are smart. And these young ladies are going somewhere. That's right. Yes, yes. yes. And I'm praying for them that they will succeed in everything in this. I don't want to tell you what we have future of, but we have future of great. That's all I'm telling you. Mr. Jessica, you've got two great sons. That's right. Yes. One of them might be passed on high street in the future. That's what he said. Put it down. Not put it down. We got into the divine. God is going to do some wonderful things in your lives. And I hope that you'll remember February of 2023, you may not remember that the 19th, but you remember it was February of 2023 when some crazy pastor says that great things are going to happen to these young ladies. You might not even remember it's 23, but please remember February because that's not fun. <laughs> you know, all I'm saying, thanks. There's some wonderful things about to happen in and through my faith. I just feel this presence, and, and I want you to name it and pray. It's time for us to, to name that destiny and walk in the journey that God has for us. Let's stand to our feet. Let's pray. Came from heaven to earth to show us the way. From the earth, he went to the cross, our sins to bear. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Come on, say, lift up the name of Jesus. His name is going to be praised. It's coming for us to pray through the faith. The straight way, pray through the straight way. Paul and Silas, and God frees them. What I mean, you're going through and praise your way through, say, don't have the strength right now to take pull you down. Yes, the strength is broken, but thank God, you don't have your strength. I look up to the audience and I see my dear brother Rollins. He is here to say, His heart might to be fast because he's happy in Jesus. And we pray, Lord, slow down his heart. Slow it down. Slow it down. And he's gone through eight days or whatever in the hospital and he's two, three weeks out and coming to church every Sunday. Yeah. He might be quiet, but he's praising the Lord. And we are, we're not going to be, be quiet with him. We're going to praise the Lord for him. You're going to shout that God is good. You know, just a couple days ago, Brother Leroy said, I'm on my way to the hospital and I have issues with my respiratory system, my breathing or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we sent out a, a bowl of prayer. Yeah. We sent out a prayer request. And a few hours later, I got a text saying, I'm home. Praise yeah. the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's got to be a testimony. I want to hear from one person. I want to open the name for one. Come on, down. 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 Come on, when we're out on these streets, the enemy, the radio, TV, media, newspaper, you name it, they are putting down our young brothers. But I'm here to tell you that there's so many young brothers out here doing the thing. Yesterday, me and my wife were at the mall, and I'm giving a praise testimony because it was a 14-year-old brother. And that this is his slogan, Pastor. What's it say? Study and never stop. Study and never stop. He's 14 years old. He goes to
and said, whatever you love, start a business. And this nine-year-old shop t-shirts and clothing and talking about the Lord. And as many parts there just like them. And speak to our young people. We say hello to our young people. And check on our young people. And believe what whose report will we believe? Yes. Court of the Lord. Please have a kind of background on this type of the service. But don't listen to me. If the Holy Spirit tells you to shout, you can start shouting. Because the Spirit in you, if it's the Spirit in me, it will shut me up when you start shouting. I, I, I'm not intimidated by anybody touching the Holy Spirit. If that's what you turn it to be. But this is a beautiful time in the presence of the Lord. And since the Holy Spirit has been showing up here every Sunday and showing off. Showing off. Amen. Father, we thank you. We love you. We adore you. You are all of us. You need to be. And we give you praise. We give you glory and honor. To your master's name. We thank you, O Lord, for every call, for every destination, but we thank you mostly for the journey, the journey that will help us to understand you more, help us to trust you more, help us to walk with you more, help us to rest in you more, help us to let go more of our time. Thank you for that journey that is constantly preparing us. So that when we get this breakthrough, we can run this way, knowing that the altar finisher and perfect has gone before us and has made a path for us. So we're going to run the race, Lord. We're going to finish this course. We're going to come to a time where we just praise you all the way through. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your praise, your blessings, your honor, and your glory. And now we give it to you because you're the only wise God. The only one able to present us faultless before the presence of your throne. And you do it with exceeding great joy. So to you, Lord, the all majesty, dominion and power now and forevermore. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Greet one another. God loves you. We love you. No more, no more, no more porridge for them. <laughs> Can I have your attention just for a second, please? Just for a second, real quick. I don't know if anybody mentioned it, but let's keep Temple University Police Department at prayer. As one of their officers was killed yesterday. Oh, oh. But here's the thing, especially this being Black History Month. In anticipation when they say we have a suspect, I'm quite sure everybody was looking on TV for African American. This was a Caucasian 18 year old from Bucks County I believe it. who shot and killed this officer. And I don't want this to happen to anybody, but I rejoice that one of ours was not on the TV screen. So let's remember this family as well as they uh, mourn the loss of their officer. 